Hey guys, this is video 13.3. We're now gonna talk about heat of reaction, so kind of taking it to the next step <clears throat> in dealing with these reactions. Um, we're gonna talk about the energy that's associated with it, okay? So just remember, again, kind of reiterating this throughout the whole unit, reactions where you break and then you reform bonds. So that just doesn't happen by itself um, without any energy transfer, okay? Not all bonds are created equal. We've talked about bonding in depth back in Unit 5, ionic versus covalent. So there's a lot of pieces that are taking place. And if you think back to the reaction mechanism piece we talked about in the first um, video, all right, we saw that as well. So heat of reaction, also known as delta H, so make sure that you know that, um, that heat of reaction is delta H, so when you're doing your definitions and stuff, maybe add that to it. It's also known as enthalpy. Okay, enthalpy. Notice how I have it over here, it's in red, capital H, that H reminds you, or hopefully will help you remember that, hey, there's heat or energy that is lost or gained, okay? So that's exactly what it is. It's the amount of heat energy lost or gained throughout a reaction, okay? So, what we're talking about in terms of energy is potential energy, right? It's what's stored in the bonds. So, kind of remember that, right? Potential energy stored in bonds. That's the key to remember there. So how we calculate delta H is we take the potential energy of the products minus the potential energy of the reactants. So if you think about this in terms of like where it all sets in a reaction, it's kind of like final minus initial, all right? And we've done that before with delta T, where it's the final temperature minus the initial temperature. Same idea here. It's the products, which are the final piece, because they come at the end of the reaction, minus the reactants, which is the initial and that's going to give us delta H, okay? So you guys won't be asked in this class to necessarily calculate it by subtracting products minus reactants. You have to know how to apply it and what it means when you're given a delta H. You'll be able to find it using a reference table, which we'll get into a little bit later in this video. So, number one, re there's two types of reactions that we're going to talk about. You've heard these terms before throughout your academic careers. Um, and we're going to now put it kind of to use here and see it when it implies to graphs in the next video. And then in terms of the um, heats of reaction that you're going to have to identify in your reference table. So reactions that release energy, what would those be called? Releasing energy. Exothermic. That shouldn't be anything brand new. Releasing, you're leaving, you're giving it away. Exo, that prefix. If you have an exothermic reaction, your delta H value will be negative. Okay, and we've kind of seen this before when we did our Q values, right? Like Q equals M, C delta T, right? If it's a negative Q, that means it was released, all right? Same kind of general idea here. So if we were to write this out in terms of a reaction, okay, so exothermic there, this is what it would look like. Energy is a product, okay? Energy is a product. It's gonna be on the right-hand side of the arrow. So example, sodium and water, heat and fire is a product, okay? Um, when we do review at the end of the year, I'll show you guys sodium reacting with water. All right, so if exothermic is one type of reaction and it releases energy, what would we call a reaction that absorbs or gains energy? It's the opposite of exo, which would be endothermic, okay? So we didn't, you know, we talked about these a little bit when we did our Q values. We did the math for that back then. Now we're going into the theories. That's kind of where we're at. So if delta H for an exothermic reaction is negative, which I forgot to write in the negative sign, for endothermic, delta H would then have to be positive. Okay, that means you're putting energy into the system. Okay, you're putting energy in. That's what I'm also kind of write right here. Putting energy in. In. So um, when we talk about reactions later on in terms of spontaneity, all right, exothermic reactions are going to be spontaneous because you don't have to t put any extra energy in. Okay? Endothermic reactions, on the other hand, are non-spontaneous. 
all right? Um, so something like baking, right? You need the oven to supply the heat. You can put all the ingredients together, you know, when you want to bake a cake or whatever, but nothing's going to happen, right? It's never going to get baked if you don't add the energy into it to get all the chemical processes started within that cake batter, okay? So you need something else to supply the heat. Now, remember, as we start going through and we start looking at delta H values and trying to identify those, whatever you do to a chemical reaction, you must also do to the delta H, okay? It's kind of like saying, hey, if we change one number within a compound when we balance an equation, you got to do it to all of them. So keep that in mind. So, example number one, if we reverse a reaction, meaning you flip the products and the reactants, then what do we have to do for the sign of the delta H? Well, if we reverse it, we flip the products and reactants, so we're going to do the sign. We're going to flip the sign. So, um, for example, a negative would become a positive, and vice versa. Okay, a positive would then become a negative. You'll see more of what I mean by this if you can't grasp it right now. In a couple minutes when we do some practice problems, you'll understand what I'm saying. If I double the equation or the coefficients, then you must do what to the delta H? Well, if I'm doubling all my coefficients, that means I'm using twice as much stuff, which means it would take twice as much heat, and my delta H would double as well. All right, so that's kind of what we're doing with it. Let's do some practice. So on the next page in your notes, Table I. So have your reference tables out. If I make any notes on here in the note packet, I would encourage you guys to make those notes as well in your reference tables. I guarantee you, you will see a question dealing with table I. Many students will forget that they have this table, so we'll definitely hit it in June um, when we are focusing on Regents Review. But the hardest part about this, guys, is to find the reaction because you have to make sure everything is correct. With the example reaction that you're given, you've got to make sure that every state is correct. Every number might look a little bit different. You'll see as we go through some practice here in a minute, you've got to make sure that you're looking at the right reaction. So let's start off with an easier one. N2 plus 2O2 yields 2NO2. So you have table I. You're not asked to you know, memorize anything. You've just got to know how to apply it and how to use this table. So start looking for it. So I'm going to start with N2 because it's my first one. I'm going to go all the way down my list here. So I see an N2 here and N2 there. Notice all of those. Those are the only two reactions that start with N2. All right, now I'm going to look at my other pieces. Well, this first one is just O2, and the second one is 2O2. Well, I have a 2 here, so I need to make sure that I'm using this guy right here. So there's my reaction. My states of matter are all the same. Everything's the same. So now all I've got to do is figure out my delta H. That's this value right here. So the first thing is, let's just write the number down. If the reaction is ex that we have in our example, like here in number one, if it's exactly the same, we don't have to do anything because there it is. That's it. It's a positive um, 66.4 kilojoules per mole. All right. The only other thing we have to know is endothermic or exothermic. So this is going back to our signs. That sign is going to tell us. Remember, if it's exothermic, it's a negative delta H. If it's endothermic, it's positive, meaning you have to put energy into it. So this is a positive delta H. That means this is going to be endothermic. All right. This is all we have to do for this. So don't make it harder than it needs to be. There's a couple different um, catches we got to remember like that if whatever you do the reaction you got to make sure you do it to the uh, delta H so that's what we're going to kind of talk through with these rest of them if you feel comfortable I encourage you to pause the video try to go through and do two through five on your own but I'm going to work through them myself here all right number two I'm looking for n2 again hmm n2 plus 3h2 yields two ammonia well here's an n2 here's an n2 all right oh look here's another one that I forgot in the last one so, obviously those first two I'm not going to use because they're dealing with oxygen. I don't even have oxygen in my reaction. So it means I have to use this guy right here. Look to make sure the states are exactly the same, the coefficients. All right, everything looks the same here. So that means all I have to do is write that number down. Negative 91.8 kilojoules per mole. It's a negative value, which means it's going to be exothermic. Okay? I encourage you guys on your regions exam or on a test or a quiz to physically take your pencil and go through and mark on table I in your reference table 
to make sure that you um, are looking at the right one. All right, well, let's take a look at number three. Well, what do you notice about number three and number two? They're the same reaction, right? Or are they? What's different about number three from number two? Number three has been flipped, okay? So ammonia in number two was a product. Now it's a reactant. So we flip the reaction around. What do we then have to do? If we go back and look at our notes, okay, Oh, if you reverse a reaction, then you must flip the sign for the delta H. So in number two, when you had nitrogen and hydrogen as your reactants, it was negative 91.8. Here we flipped it. Those have become products, so it's the reverse reaction. That means we have to flip or reverse the sign. So now it's positive 91.8, which means it now becomes an endothermic reaction. Okay. Now, if we wanted to go backwards, so naturally... No, reaction number two wants to happen because, hey, N2 plus 3HO, oh, we're making this. And we'll talk about why that is later on in terms of spontaneity. Here, number three doesn't want to happen, so we have to add that energy to get the reaction to go. Okay? So that's one caveat we have to remember. Number four, now I'm going to look for carbon plus oxygen yields CO2. So I'm looking for Cs. All right, these all first ones have Cs, but not exactly what I'm looking for. So I keep going on. So I've got this one right here, CO plus, no, that's not right. C solid plus O2 yields CO2. This is my reaction that looks closest. But what do you notice that's different about it? Okay, if I look at my delta H, it's negative three, um, 93.5, but notice I've got all these twos here. So what do I have to do to my delta H? I need to double it. When I double it, I get negative 787 kilojoules per mole. The sign stays the same, so it's still exothermic, but I had to double it because my concentration's doubled, okay? Which means it took twice as much heat to be able to get the reaction, or to, it produced, excuse me, twice as much heat because it was exothermic, so it released twice as much. All right, and number five, same idea, okay? So I'm looking for CO2 breaking down into CO and half of an oxygen. Well, that's going to be this guy right here. But notice there's two differences with this, two. Notice in our actual table reaction, it's 2CO plus O2 yields 2CO2. Well, notice we don't have any twos here. So we've cut it in half. That's the first thing. But also, we flipped it. So you've got to do both things here. So first off, it was negative 566. So now we've got to make it a positive. We've got to divide that by 2. 283 would be my new value, and it's positive, so it's endothermic, all right? Now, you're going to do a lot of practice with this, so if you're confused, if I went too fast, you can go back and rewatch stuff, but we will get a lot of practice with it. I guarantee you, you will be asked at least one question like this on the Regents in June. Last couple things, forward reaction, guys. This is when you're reading left to right in a reaction. Okay, that means the reaction moves oops, toward the right. So it would read something like this, A plus B yields C plus D. The reverse reaction, though, is the opposite. Okay, we're reading right to left in a reaction. It's not a J, that's a semicolon. So the reaction moves toward the left. So if we wrote it same reaction, it's the reverse of that, so our arrow would be flipped. And that's essentially, guys, what we were doing in a couple of these examples where we had to kind of flip those um, delta H's. Okay? Till next time, I'll see you later.